guys, it is Unders here for WarriorSoundBeats.com with a nice quick video just showing you guys how to use Quantize in FL Studio. So, Quantize in FL Studio is all handled in the piano roll because we can only really quantize MIDI inside here. So if you've ever got a piece of audio, you're either going to have to move it around manually or put it into the sampler and trigger it via MIDI. We have got just here uh, some hi-hat patches in this whole track and we're just going to look at how we could maybe quantize those. So we can open the piano roll by just double clicking here and that's going to give us our hi-hats right here. Your piano roll might open differently to mine. I have it set so it sits at the bottom so I can keep working on my project and working on this at the same time. Works for me, might work for you. Give it a go. Why not? So we can hit play. And we can just press L there to swap out of song mode back into pattern mode. And we've got our hi-hats. So in the piano roll, top left hand, we've got this little drop down arrow and we've got tools. Now tools gives us three different options for quantize. So the first one's quick quantize. It takes your last settings and applies that quantize. So if you've already set it once, you can just um, really quickly apply it to any of the others with command and Q there. The quick quantize start times. Now this takes the same thing, but if you've got notes of a different length, it doesn't shorten them down because that's what may happen. So for example, on my hi-hats, if I had one particular longer open hat sound and I use the quick quantize, it might shorten that open hat down, okay? So quantize is where we set everything. It's Alt and Q. On your Mac, that's gonna be Option Q. And you see now it's given us a nice grid at the bottom and opened up this little menu here, which is our lovely quantize menu. Now all the red lines it's showing are the grid. And you can see it's named 16 Drummer Swing 2. 16 means it's a 16th note swing. Um, you'll find 16th and 8th to be the most common quantized types. If you don't understand the difference between like the 16th and 8th in terms of rhythm, um, it's worth looking that up before you start trying to do quantizing and things. Having an understanding of it will help you out a lot more. So if we click on the folder just here, we're going to get our folder with all of our different quantized patterns in here. And if you want to save your own or add, or you've downloaded some, you want to add them, this is the folder to drop them into. And we can just use the little arrow that will show us everything in our folder. So we know we're on 16 drummer swing two, which is just up here. And if you have a look at the red grid, I'm going to change it to MPC2. And you're going to see that grid change because the swing from the drummer is going to be taken out of the equation. And what it will do is any notes that it needs to, it will move to match with MPC2. Like so, you saw a slight movement there. What I'll do is I'll play the loop back and we'll change between the two. Now, the most important part is going to be between bar two and three and between bar four and five here, where I've got the, the almost triplet runs, right? So focus on those. First one, I'll leave it on MPC2 and I'll swap it back to drummer swing. So hopefully you're feeling that difference. Yeah, MPC is a little bit more rigid, yeah? So if we have a look here at the different things we've got on it, we've got start time. Remember we looked at that quick quantize start time. This is going to be that setting and what's going on with it. Now, it's not really going to move anything too much for us, but there were very small movements. But what I'll try and do is zoom in. And you should see this uh, solo note here, if I've managed to zoom into it. If I take the start time down, it's going to move back to the old start time, which was slightly swung. Yes, yeah, so you can see it moving slightly off the grid. Everything's just kind of shuffling just a little bit off the grid. So if you had a note that was like right in between these timings, um, this would snap it right to or bring it right the way back so it's effectively out of time. Okay, the sensitivity is just by how much it's gonna take effect. 
and duration. Remember we said about it shortening down notes. So this is what comes into effect here. This won't really change anything for us, but if we had longer notes in there, it would shorten them down. We can then actually quantize some of the overall parameters as well. So we've got some velocity going on in here. We can see that it changes a little bit. It gets a little bit louder on some of the flurries, right? If we was to quantize the velocity, we can really exaggerate what's already occurring, you see? This can be really useful to just make some quick adjustments between your tracks. You can just apply a little bit of a, a velocity change on a section in the hook, for example, and you'll hear that and feel that change. You could dial it back to where it was. Really simple. So that's essentially it, guys. That is how you use Quantize in FL Studio. So I hope that was useful for you. If it was, please throw a comment down below. Subscribe to the channel. Always helps me out massively. If there's a question you've got, throw that in the comments. I'll read it and I'll try and do a video to help you out. And I will see you guys on the next one.